There is some good news to report, and it comes in the form of Iraq and Afghanistan veterans taking matters into their own hands. Iraq and Afghanistan veterans of America, in their words, stormed the hill this week, lobbying Congress on veterans' health care issues and getting results. Joining us now is Paul Rykoff, who's founder and executive director of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Paul, thanks very much for being on the show. My pleasure, Rachel. Great to be with you. I want to hear about these results from storming the hill this week. What did you guys accomplish? Well, we took dozens of veterans from around the country and brought them to Washington for a week of meetings. We went with over 100 lawmakers. We held two press events to tell lawmakers what our veterans, troops, and military families need. We highlighted the need for a focus on the new GI Bill's proper implementation, the need for mandatory mental health counseling. And we call for advanced funding of the VA, which is critical. Every year the VA budget is late, and VAs around the country are forced to ration care. So we're happy to see that Congressman Filner and Senator Kaka stepped up today and introduced a new piece of legislation that has bipartisan support that will provide advanced funding for the VA and get veterans hospitals, hundreds of them around the country, uh, the support that they badly need. So the idea is that whatever the veterans' health funding is going to be, you decide it a year in advance, just so that you can plan better, so you can have a more rational system. Are there other parts of the government that are funded this way? Yes, uh, for example, PBS. So if it's good enough for Big Bird, it should be good enough for our sergeants in the Marine Corps. Uh, it, it's very difficult for these VA hospitals. I was there today with a guy uh, named Sergeant Ray Niao. He was a Lance Corporal in the Marine Corps, a Bronze Star with V device uh, recipient. He has to drive five hours to his VA hospital to receive care. When he gets there, uh, the psychologist is only available two days out of the week. And it's not because of a, a lack of folks needing care, it's because his hospitals had to ration care because they don't know what their budget will be for the next year. It's like trying to plan your family's budget if you don't know what your next paycheck's going to be. So this is really a historic piece of legislation. Every major veterans group in the country is behind it, and we need the rest of the American people to ensure that every member of the House and Senate is on board and supporting our veterans in this very critical way. This is why people support vets groups like IAVA, because you're taking a problem that has headline consequences and figuring out the super boring bureaucratic thing that would actually fix it and then taking time to educate your members enough so that you guys go fix the boring bureaucratic thing. It's not just headlines, it's about making government work right. Congratulations to you guys on that. It, it is, and it's also about taking care of our own. Uh, you mentioned the suicide numbers last last yeah. month. In January, we lost approximately 24 uh, folks, soldiers in the, in the Army, to suicide. Uh, that's more folks than we lost in combat. So in January 2009, we lost more soldiers to suicide than to Al-Qaeda. I mean, that is a, a really, really troubling number. We've got to get ahead of the curve. The Army needs mandatory uh, mental health counseling by qualified mental health care professionals. There's a shortage of them at the DOD and at the VA, and we need the American public to really rally behind this. If we lost that many soldiers to an enemy weapon system, the entire country would be outraged. The Pentagon would be scrambling to do something about it. We need the same level of urgency around these suicides. Well, Paul, reading Mark Benjamin's reporting in Salon.com this week, and it is incredible reporting, he consistently reiterates that the Army feels like they've got stuff to brag about in terms of how much they've improved on mental health issue. They've got a 24-7 hotline. They've hired more people. They think, in terms of the way they handle this stuff, that they've improved. But the outcomes just keep getting worse. Does that mean that the mental health situation among veterans, among recent veterans, is just so bad that no matter what the Army does, they can't keep up with it? Or what's going on here? Well, they're definitely playing catch-up. I think the Army realized that they've got a very serious situation here. Tomorrow, they'll be doing a stand-down uh, around the country for every uh, Army recruiting station. They will take a day off, do some suicide prevention training because suicides have been very high in, in the recruiting command. Uh, they need to get ahead of the curve here. Uh, General Corelli, on a recent uh, press conference call, admitted that they need help. They need mental health care counselors. This is a place where President Obama can step up. Michelle Obama has also talked about focusing on military families. He could issue a national National call to service and say if you are a qualified mental health care professional your country needs you help our soldiers help our veterans it doesn't matter how you stand in the war you can step up and make a difference here Paul last question for you last week um, on this show we to Michael Hastings who's a journalist who just been in Afghanistan he was embedded with US troops on the Pakistan Afghanistan border and he talked about spending a night on the border watching the Afghan border guards who were with US troops there smoking hash all night waiting for the Taliban to attack and cross back over the border into Pakistan we got a a lot of response from serving members of the military to that piece. Do you think that there is still a big gap between the reality on the front lines, what is known by the people who've got boots on the ground, and the perceptions of the people in the government and at the, at the top levels of the Pentagon who are running the war? 
I think that there's always a gap. There's always a gap between the policymakers and what we call in the military the ground truth, what the grunts are seeing on the ground. But I do think that's changing. I think we've got a much more sophisticated conversation going on in this town than we did a few years ago. People are finally starting to understand that troops alone are not the answer. It's not an antidote to violence. You don't just drop 30,000 troops in, wave a magic wand, and call it democracy and make it look like New Jersey. It's going to take comprehensive efforts that include microfinance. The State Department's got to get involved. Secretary Gates deserves a lot of credit for although he leads the Defense Department, calling for more State Department resources. There are also folks here on the Hill now who've been in Iraq and Afghanistan, congressmen like Patrick Murphy, who sits on the Armed Services Committee, Congressman Sestak and others. And Obama deserves some credit, too. He's put a lot of folks in the new DOD that have served on the ground in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I think that will help us understand these issues. Paul Rykoff, thank you for helping us make sense of what sometimes feels like a very overwhelming topic. Paul, thanks a lot. Thank you, Rachel. Paul is founder and executive director of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. You should check out their website, IAVA.org.